Hi, Askin RTC here, and in this video, we're going to finish up this little web series that they posted on the Navy training for making a sailor, and this is going to cover the final PFA, battle stations, and then graduation, but what it doesn't cover, because this wasn't around at the time of making this video, is the additional two weeks of boot camp that you're going to go through, and I will go over that as soon as I get to that part of the video where it talks about graduation, I'll pause it, and I'll just cover it real quick. So Battle Stations Day, right? So uh, they designed it now so that you'd be busy all day during Battle Stations. The whole point is to not really let you rest. You wake up at a normal time. You usually run your official PFA at that time. Sometimes you also usually have an inspection, your final drill inspection on that same day. So it's going to be a pretty busy day of running around doing things. You do some extra training. You go back into the reps and sets room. Your RDCs will keep you busy, and RDCs keep your people busy. Uh, that's the whole point is just to keep them focused, keep them energized all day. Uh, and then that night, you drop them off to the battle station staff. Uh, they'll come in that night, do a little brief, and double check them, make sure they're all, everything's all good. And then you march them over in uh, columns of four, uh, singing cadence the entire time, and then you drop them off, right? Uh, keep them busy all day, and then they're up all night doing battle stations. And then the next day, usually you do some basic stuff like uh, picking up your photos, simple things really, uh, final phone call. And then after that point, it's just trying to keep them awake. Uh and then uh, if you're a recruit going through becoming a sailor, uh, yeah, you're going to be busy all day. You're already going to run a PFA. Um, and then you're also going to be mentally drained because you're going to be doing an inspection. Uh, and then you're going to do your battle stations. And if you finish battle stations, you are then considered a sailor. And then you got to stay up the rest of the day. Uh, but you'll get uh, 10 hours of sleep that night. You, I think you go to bed like 20, 100 and wake up at 06 the next day. So you make up for it. Uh, it's not too bad unless you're on watch, uh, but then it's only just two hours of watch. You still get eight hours of sleep compared to six hours if it was a normal night of sleep. But yeah, it's a pretty uh, eventful day. It's the crucible, if you will, considered to uh, uh, the U.S. Marine Corps. Uh, once again, the final week of boot camp of the eight weeks. It's now 10 weeks now. Uh, but because you could call it boot camp is over in eight weeks, and the last two weeks is just uh, additional mentorship and salarization, but we'll cover that at the end of this. We will now have two minutes to complete as many proper push ups as you can. Are you ready? So I talked about it earlier before the final physical fitness assessment we call it the official physical fitness assessment now not final because you're going to run a pfa it used to be twice a year uh recently it's changed now to you run a pfa once a year um with uh weigh-ins and everything like that and uh run push-ups and planks now right it used to be sit-ups so the it's not final pfa uh it's sure the last one you do in boot camp if you pass but you got your baseline uh with the pacer test and then you got your RDC assessment, which is a full PFA, but it's just more to see where you're at, if you're uh, maintaining or if you're growing, if necessary, if you've gotten worse. And then your official PFA, and this is the first one that's going to be recorded into your OMPF, your official military, uh, I forget what it's called. I'll double check it though and put it down in the content. But OMPF has all your documentations, and it's also going to be in your PRIMS, which is where all your medical information is uh, for PARFQs and PHAs, which is... Uh, uh, part of is the stuff you fill out to say that you are physically fit and you don't have any like chest pains or anything like that. And PHA is a physical health assessment that you have to do yearly. Uh, just And you have to have all that up to date whenever you do uh, PFAs. Ready up. Begin. I feel great. I really do. Like all the hard work paid off. It's a huge weight off my shoulders. I'm coming from battle stations. That's for sure. Battle stations about to get the best of me right now. Take all. So, if you fail the official PFA, it really depends on 
how the training is going. Uh, if they're running battle stations that night, which most likely they are, uh, usually you do the PFA and the battle stations that night, there are some situations where your schedule might be different. You might run the PFA, and then two days later, you do the battle stations. But uh, it's not common. Usually the common thing is you run the PFA and then do battle stations that night. So if you do that, bye. If you're a recruit, you cannot run battle stations if you haven't completed every part and passed every part of training, every single piece. This is where swim failures come into mind. And if you're, like I said before in the previous video, if you're failing at swim, at this point, this is your cutoff. You're getting you're getting sent back in boot camp. Um, if you pass everything else, though, you might go to a special division just to swim every day and then get dropped into a division that just needs to run battle stations. If you haven't passed your PFA, it depends. If it's really, really close, uh, they start, uh, they changes all the time. But while I was there, it was within 30 seconds of, like, the run. Um, or if they fail just one evolution, like push-ups or planks, then uh, usually you go to a special division as well where you'll just run it over and over again until you pass, and then you're uh, dropped into a, another division that's run, that's run battle stations. Um, but, yeah, uh, failure to complete any uh, all training successfully – and maybe if you're just missing one thing at this point, PFA failure, swim, whatever, this is the point where you got to get kicked back. Uh, or at least you're held. Uh, depends, really. Like I said, there's certain uh, parameters for each one. But even if you go to that special division where you just need to pass your swim or you just need to do your PFA, uh, if you're there for two days and you're at the bottom of the training group, which means you're the last group to go through, right? You're like Battle stations goes from Sunday through Thursday. So if you're the group that's supposed to go on Thursday and you missed – you're going to go next week, which means you're going to graduate a week late, which could mess up any plans that you have for your family, which is not good, right? If they already booked tickets, hotel rooms, and everything just to come out to see you graduate, they're going to have to change all that. They'll let you make that phone call to let them know, but you know, if it's Thursday and graduation is on Friday, uh, might be expensive. So it would behoove you to just go start running now if, you have, if you're not going to do well with running and do push-ups and planks anything to support planks there's plenty of youtube videos out there with uh fitness creators that will just show you uh things just to help you improve your physical fitness you don't need to go out and spend a lot of money with the gym membership and then swimming like i said just the best thing you could do is to go to a local pool see if they do swim lessons or you know a friend that can swim and have them teach you because that would help you leaps and bounds if uh you've never ever stepped into a pool before which yes there are plenty of people who have just never swam before in their life it's just uh, people grow up in different places all of that Work together as a team, execute the mission, and the next time I see you, you'll be sailing. So I'm going to be very picky about what I talk about for battle stations. There's a page 13 that you sign when you do battle stations, and a page 13, uh, at the very least in the Navy, I'm not sure if it's across all branches, is uh, a statement of understanding. So it's not, there's uh, one page 13, there's... Page 13 is a, is a form, a legal form, and it states that you understand the rules that are set forth in front of you. So there's a battle stations page 13 that states that you will not talk to anyone about battle stations or um, that has not passed battle stations, or you will not talk to anyone about battle stations who has passed, but someone who hasn't gone through battle station hasn't, uh, is in the room kind of a thing. You're just not supposed to talk about it. You sign page 13s for everything. Uh, let's say you're assigned a personal qualification standard, right? Uh, you're supposed to get a qualification, for example, ESWAS. When you start to get ESWAS, you're given 18 months uh, upon the issuance of getting ESWAS, enlisted surfer, surface warfare specialist, which you can see right here on Chief's chest. You're given 18 months to pass it. Um, so you sign a page 13 saying that you have to do it. If not, you become a delinquent in it or dink. And then there's uh, EMI that could be issued to you. So that's another form of page 13. There's You sign page 13s all throughout your military career for everything. Booyah Navy. Booyah! Battle Stations is a crucible event. They go in as recruits and they come out sailors. The most nerve wracking part about going into Battle Stations was knowing that if we don't pass Battle Stations, there is no way that you will graduate. Yeah, if you fail battle stations, it really stinks. Um, yeah, I got to look into why you fail. And here's uh, – they said it's a team event. 100% true. There are individual failures, and then there's team failures. You'll be set into, like, boat teams, right? Uh, usually they divide your division into eight teams. Um, and so you're going to be with that team the entire time. Uh, stay with your team. Don't get separated from your team. No one person goes alone anywhere. You're always going to have to require to know where they all are at times, which is usually within arm length of each other. 
uh, whenever you do the evolutions that you go through that night, which I'm not going to go in detail, but uh, but you're going to do them as those teams, and you're going to ro- um, you're going to go through them all together. And so you you have a team grade and an individual grade. Uh, so if you just do what you're told and then react appropriately, which is you're going to go through training. Right? There's going to be firefighting. There, uh, there's going to be damage control. Uh, there's going to be watch standing. There's uh, they do a little few things as well that are for fu- like uh, they start off as if like your ship's getting underway kind of a thing. So there's going to be like stores on load, which you see in here. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail what those are, what the specifically it is, but I could say that if you're paying attention and you pass everything before uh, through boot camp uh, as far as damage control, you know, seamanship, fire, um, basic watch standing, you'll be fine. Uh, just listen to the instructions given to you by the instructor that's going to lead your team and uh, react appropriately and you'll be just fine. Uh, the only th- part, like you're going to be psyched up the whole night. There's a, there's going to be stuff going on. It's just near the end that, you know, you get tired and that's when you start, people start doing dumb stuff where they, they try to sneak away and fall asleep and they act like we've, <laughs> they've never done this job before. Like they haven't been doing this for years, decades, you know, we share information from, you know, one RDC to another as they rotate through. And, um, yeah, if you go sleep, someone's either going to snitch on you, which if you see someone sleeping, wake them up, uh, or the RDC is going to catch you. They're going to walk, they're going to walk into where you think you're, oh, no one's going to come in here, catch me sleeping all the time, all the time. And it's, it stinks as an RDC processing the paperwork for that is really annoying. Uh, and you know, as you as a recruit, if you fail, that sucks as well, because now you're going to have to rerun battle stations. Um, and it's not going to be fun. Uh, the fact that you're also going to be set back because of a failure. But like I said, it's not hard if you just rely on your training that you got and just follow instructions and look out for your shipmates that are in your team. You'll be just fine. So this is the uh, building two, the main building, or building one, sorry, where uh, RDCs go to all the time. The captain triad works out of here. It's the main building. Um, it's the uh, – it's so everything's held here for – and it's all underground. Uh, but it's like I think Universal Studios or something made this ship. Uh, but it's pretty cool. Uh, I, as a sailor, went through, you know, as an RDC later – and other than it just being larger, like there's more space, like ships are way more cramped than what they made it there. They obviously made it bigger because it's a training environment, but it's super accurate uh, as f- other than that, like how things are on a ship. Uh, so still a pretty good experience. Eight, um, eight o'clock at night. Stop. All right, y'all are motivated. That's great. You need to maintain that motivation all throughout the night. You're, you're tired now, this is going to be nothing at 04, 05, 06. Chief, you've been due to now, man, you're ready for battle station, Chief. Hey, it's a great shot of it. There's also pictures online. I've used one of the pictures from my thumbnails. Uh, but this is it right here. It's supposed to look like a destroyer, if I remember correctly. It might be a frigate, but this looks very destroyery. Um definitely not a cruiser but it is one of what you would consider a, it's called a small boy or a smaller ship um but yeah uh, oh and the instructors here they're either rdc's on their whole job or they're straight up instructors they're, they've never been rdc's um it's just because they went and built it to an instructor and they went to battle stations is all um there it's nothing negative or anything like that but yeah not all these people will be rdc's on hold or anything like that and you won't be able to tell the difference really the you don't wear ropes when you're on battle stations So Battle Stations is the final test before you can graduate boot camp. It is all night long, and it's basically all... So this part right here, I thought was funny. Uh, you saw earlier, they're doing basic seamanship, right? They're, it's like a ship. It's, it gets underway, stuff happens, then you pull back into port. So it's a full evolution. Um, it la- lasts all night. And right here, I just thought it was kind of funny. Of course, they're going to tell them to hurry up because it's, uh, you know, you got to get through the night and you got to get to the next evolution that you're going to be doing, uh, the next event, if you will. We call them evolutions. 
Uh, this is stores unload. You do it all the time on a ship. Uh, I mean, some ships have it where they have contractors like load the stuff on, but usually, especially in foreign ports, you're going to have trucks pull up with, with crates of your food, your mail, your stores and snacks and stuff like that. And so you form a line, and then you just pass along to each other. It's a very chill environment. People play music, talk, chat. You know, that's it. It's, you just kind of get it done kind of a thing. Um, Khaki will walk around and try to find people hiding out, not wanting to help. But the thing is, usually they hold up liberty before, uh, and they say, you can't go unless this is done kind of a thing. So you might as well help, and it just makes it easier. It makes it go by faster. But, yeah, it's a, it's a thing you do all the time. Everyone participates. And uh, you just chill and play music, and there's, you're just passing along a box kind of a thing, really. Uh, but, yeah, no one's going around yelling at you, like, hurry up. Uh, but it's, this is just a Battle Stations thing. The classes that you've had and all the training that you've had since you came to boot camp, just all crammed into one. We, we, try, to, we try to keep everybody in line, try to keep everybody awake, try to keep everybody as less stressed as possible. We keep everybody happy. Uh, and I think we did a good job. There's not much that I can say about Battle Station. It's just that it's very tiring. It's very stressful. Can't say that much about Battle Station because he signed at page 13. You got to rely on your shipmates next to you to make sure that you all got through it efficiently. It made me kind of think about my job and my role um, as far as the Navy goes. It really made me appreciate how important it is for every single member on that ship to know exactly what to do and where to go and how to get things done efficiently. That way you're not just looking for that one firefighter, that one DC man to come and save the day, so to say. So I really appreciated that part and that aspect of my training because everybody needs to know that. She makes a really great point, right? It's um, in the Navy, we call it, it's called damage controlman or DC. It's a rate um, similar to what the other branches would call an MOS. And they're, they're like the kings and queens of this. They know this stuff inside and out. It's their job. Uh, but in the middle of the ocean, there's no fire. There's, you can't call the fire department, you know? It's going to be the whole ship's responsibility, whether you're a gunner's mate, a fire control man, a uh, logistics specialist, a yeoman, a damage control man. It doesn't matter. An operation specialist, an undesignated seaman. doesn't matter. You're going to go fight that fire because it's the middle of the ocean. You don't want to drown and die. Um, so everyone goes through this training. Everyone's a line handler. Everyone's a fireman in the Navy. Everybody um, is just really excited that we get to graduate tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I need you to be done, all right? And you to see our family. Yeah. So you got to tell this is the end of the night. They're probably told they're, they're done kind of a thing. They finished, and they're just cleaning up now and uh, waiting to line up and do their official ceremony now, um, which is the, called the capping ceremony. It's where they go out. They take out the recruit ball. Uh, the RTCs hand out their Navy ball cap. They take off the recruit ball cap, and they put on the Navy one. And bada bing, bada boom, you're, you're a Navy sailor. Congratulations, you passed it, right? Uh, but you can tell they're just kind of zoned out. His voice is gone. It's raspy because he's just been shouting, trying to keep everyone motivated. They're happy, but you could just kind of tell they're, you know, um, when your adrenaline runs out you're like, you're, and you're calming down, that's when you get super tired. Anyone can tell you that if you had a long day and you had an adrenaline-filled day, as soon as the adrenaline stops, you just get sleepy. Uh, so, yeah, that's what they're feeling right now. And, and everything is done pretty much. That's, that's the main thing. We're happy to be done with this. And I'm happy for all you guys are done with and everybody who finishes together. You'll hear people say boot camp is a filter, not a pump. We're supposed to evaluate these people and uh, decide whether they're sailors or not. But I will refuse to lower the standard to help someone achieve the goal that, in my opinion, is one of the greatest things you can do, and that's become a sailor. So all the recruits that do make it through my divisions, I'll be proud of and feel like I'm really helping out the fleet. Well, for the captain ceremony, I got the chills, I got the goosebumps, and um, 
I didn't tear. I kind of tear up a little bit. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, it's 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 emotional, you know. Uh, it's been a long eight weeks. All the things that we've been through. It was kind of emotional. It was nice finally being able to shake my RDC's hands and shake my fellow shipmates' hands and trade in that recruit ball cap and finally get that ball cap that's been sitting in my rack since. So it's true. Uh, I'm I'm like this guy right here in this picture. I'm smiling. I'm proud of my recruits turning into sailors when I was an RDC. It's a great moment. You've been with them the entire time from sunrise to sunset, you know? And so you kind of go through the experience with them. Uh, understand this is the recruits boot camp. It's not the RDC's boot camp. But being there to experience, to be the one that teaches them and see them succeed is such a great and rewarding so great and rewarding. Like it's it's one of the best feelings. And then on top of that, when you see them graduate and they're in the dress whites or dress blues and they do the they do the left turn and they all turn together and they look sharp, division eyes right, they're all in step. It's great. It feels good. So yeah, I got a little emotional when I was doing the capping ceremony. And uh you know, recruits get emotional. Uh, you know, I guess at this point they're sailors, right? So sailors get emotional as well. It's normal. It's not only they've been through eight weeks of boot camp, but they've just been up for 24 hours, and then, you know, it's over. It's, you know, now they just got to make it to graduation. Congratulations, you know? It's such a great feeling of relief of this whole thing where you're just constantly trying to make sure you meet this standard of the basics. Even though it's just the basics for a civilian, it's difficult. Um, but it's such a great and rewarding feeling. So I'm going to play the rest of this part without uh, any audio from the video because there's not much to really listen to what they're saying. They're marching here to graduation in dress whites. Um, so this is the part that your drill two and three are going to be, uh, your second or third drill assessment is going to be on. Your first one is, can you march through the base columns of three and follow the traffic patterns? And I'm going to pause it here and talk about it. And the second and third one is, can you do graduation ceremony properly? Uh, so that was the one that you, like, they're all your ones that you're going to really want to put a lot of time and effort to. The first one is, can you march around with your RDCs and can you do it properly looking good? Follow the patterns that you're told, uh, they call them traffic patterns, how you want to march around. And the second, the third is, can you look good and do the graduation proper? Cause the ceremony is going to be watched by everyone's families and it's live stream. So you, you know, the chain of command is going to be there. So you want to make sure you look good. You know, you're practicing for your graduation and here now you are performing it and you've done it probably hundreds of times at this point um uh, we as RDCs, a lot of us uh not all but a lot of us really really love training drill it's just that part that you can work together and look really sharp uh it's uh and for families out here you can see them here in the stands uh before so recruits that are coming in that are turning into sailors you won't know but there's going to be signs posted all along here with signposts that have uh, division numbers of those who are going to be graduating and so family members when you go out there and you look uh, you're going to see the division number for whoever you're going to see the graduation for, uh, son, daughter, husband, wife, brother, sister, whatever it is, right? Uh, if you're sitting somewhere near that signpost, they will uh, they'll take those signposts away when it starts, and then when the divisions march around, uh, you, they will be parked there. So look, they, you'll be able to find your um, persons at your sailor's division and then look for them there and they will stop on that mark. This is uh, it's, there's a bunch of little marks everywhere. Obviously you see the yellow lines for guiding so they can march straight together. Um, and then there's little dots and they will know these dots. They're trained to look at these dots and halt the division on those dots. And that's where you're going to see the sign. So yeah, if you're standing somewhere around that area, you're good to go. You'll see, you'll see them or at least your division and you can start looking for your sailor here. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to continue playing this without the audio. So now you're going to talk about the two weeks of boot camp, or I guess you can call it boot camp. Uh, but what, what happens after graduation? At this point, it used to be where you would then just go on to your school. Uh, we called it the uh, the fly out nights or the flight weekends, where you would leave either right away after this and go across the street to the Naval Service Training Command uh, for some of your A schools. And if those were your A schools, you would fly out to you know everywhere, Florida. Texas, California, Virginia, wherever your school was, right? Um, and those you would fly out that weekend. So you'd usually get that day uh, to go out with your family, and then you'd come back, pack up all your stuff, and then you know your flight itinerary uh, before it happens. So you'll have a heads up. You either fly, fly out that night or Saturday night uh, or Sunday night, uh, or unless there's some sort of holdup where – their school hasn't been able to process you yet, then you might have to stay a couple of extra days, uh, sometimes a week, and then you're good to go. Uh, especially if you've been ASMOed uh, or sent back in training, and then that changes up how everything works for your 
your school. So you obviously you're going to be say you're asking back two weeks and then you graduate. Well, that school's not going to hold up the class for two weeks. They're going to reassign you. So sometimes that takes a little bit, but now it's changed a little bit. Um, so for weeks nine and ten now, if you had a normal eight week boot camp, uh, you dive into it's called Cyber for Life. It's a module that aims to like help recruits after boot camp. So there's a lot of uh, uh, mentorship, life skills, and personal professional development, um, more hands on mentoring, not really RDCs chewing on your throat, and some more relaxed environment, more mentorship. And these are skills that's going to be for definitely younger sailors, uh, but it applies to anyone that would need this knowledge. Some people, this is their first time ever having a full time job. Uh, Sometimes this is people having a well paying job. Uh, so this is a kind of a thing that helps you set up more of like your, your life. Like, what are you going to do with this money now? How should you properly handle bills? What should you be worried about now that you were a young sailor or even just in general in the military? Because there's a lot of people out there just try to scam military members all the time. It's really sickening how some people just take advantage of that because they know that if they get you to sign some sort of contract, you're a guaranteed paycheck for however many years you're in the military. And then if you sign a contract and fail to fulfill it, they just contact the military and the military will just take it from your paycheck unless it's a full-fledged scam. Um, there are some people that are just not allowed uh, to sign military up for any kind of contract. And that could be something like, um, next day, uh, pay loans, uh, for whatever they're called, like loan trucks to places. Uh, it is illegal for them to do that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's good. It, it gives you life skills as like a one being in the military two adjusting back into civilian life. And three, if you've never had this kind of like pay, like this is a little life skills kind of thing to make sure that, cause you know, if you go on the fleet and then you make terrible financial decisions and then you're not able to show up to the ship or you, you know, then you become, you're no longer an asset to the military. And of course, one, you're hurting yourself and no one wants to see you hurt yourself or put yourself in a bad situation. But in the Navy's eyes, if you can't perform your job because you're wrapped up in some sort of situation, because you're just, uh, not, mature enough to understand or just never experienced that and didn't know what to make the right decision, then the Navy can't utilize you. So it's a, it's a two part thing. One us, you know, me, I would not want that to be you to get hurt in that situation. I'm happy to mentor anyone that, but the Navy sees it as they don't want to lose their asset. But so, uh, yeah, there's two weeks of life skills, which is great. They've been doing this actually over on the Naval Service Training Command side. So if you ended up going to A school there, you would do life skills for two weeks. Now they're just making sure that everyone gets it because not everyone was going to go over to the other side. So they're having it part of the program here at boot camp. So that just makes it uh, – and if, you know, if this is stuff that you already know, then cool. It's an extra two weeks of just kind of, you know, chilling and earning that paycheck. But if you are younger or just have never had a full-time paying job like this before or have questions about things that we do in the Navy that are different than civilian life, this is going to be great. Uh, I mean, regardless, it's great information, but – the, the amount you benefit is, is depending on your own past skills, but everyone's going to take home something from it because this is your first time in the military. You're going to learn something new for sure. So that wraps up this series and attacking on the extra two weeks of boot camp. Um, more videos to come, more informational videos to help prepare boot camp, and also some more videos that are going to be talking about, you know, getting onto a first ship, some things you should do, maybe like the first week and checking in your command or checking into schoolhouses, help you prepare. If you have any video suggestions, leave it in the comment section below. Hoo ya, Navy.